And more news coming up in just a couple of minutes. Right now, Des, I've got a little, little pain right here. Oh, come on, Mark. You're too young for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what we're talking about. A lot of people suffer from pain, back pain, lower back pain. I mean, it, it, it really, you hear it all the time. And it could actually be because you're doing things wrong. So today, we're talking to my guest here, Anthony Carey, uh, who has a business called Function First. And you have a book coming up in October called The Pain-Free Program. We'll talk about that in a second. Oh, there it is. Um, first of all, good morning. Good morning. You hear people complain about back pain all the time and their knees hurt and their neck hurts and all of these things and then you wonder well what can they do about it and how did it happen in the first place? Well a lot of people are under the misconception that their pain, the site of the pain is the only reason they have pain and really there's a lot of contributing factors that are kind of whole body uh, that we look at that really can contribute to the pain manifesting itself in one area whether it's the back, the neck, the shoulder or whatever and so by just trying to fix what hurts, they're missing part of the big equation. Okay, so p a part of the big equation is to look at how you sort of relate to your environment throughout the day. Mark and I sit all day yes, you at do. work. I mean, we <laughs> hardly, this is all, this is it. I'm getting up for a few minutes right now, but we Good. sit a lot. And I could imagine that that would contribute to some sort of back pain or that sort of thing. Absolutely, we're really victims of our environment. So if we do a lot of anything on a regular basis, our body becomes either more efficient at it or it kind of fills the groove that that environment creates for us. So sitting creates tightness in certain muscles that are always short from the sitting position. Other muscles become longer and weaker as a result. That affects our overall movement pattern. So the sitting itself can put a lot of pressure on the lower back. It can create uh, the need for the head to go forward if we're using a computer, et cetera. So over time, that really beats us up. And I see that you brought a chair with you here. Um, are there things that you want to teach us then to sort of work on, <laughs> you know, our sitting all the time or that sort of thing? I can show you a couple exercises. I think the point that you want to understand is that uh, when we sit, for instance, uh, certain muscles do become shorter and tighter, but a lot of people want to just stretch all the time. And if we just stretch without addressing the muscles on the other side that really need to be strengthened, it doesn't affect the mm -hmm. balance. So we just keep stretching and stretching. Okay, so exercise seems like it's very important to I, recovering from pain. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because we have to teach our body to do things differently. Because right. we can continually have other people do stuff to us. Okay. So you want me to demonstrate or you want to demonstrate? I want to see you do it because I want to. I want our audience <laughs> okay. to see it being done right. Okay. <laughs> well... First of all, typically when we sit, we have a tendency to sit in the back of the chair, and if there's not a back support, our pelvis kind of tips underneath, and oh, which yeah. rounds out our lower back. If our lower back rounds out, our head wants to come forward. Mm -hmm. So again, the muscles of the spine become longer, the muscles in the front become shorter. So we would encourage you to sit towards the front of your chair, and this is just as, as an interruption to your day, and give your, your body kind of a postural wake up. You sit towards the front, you get up on your sit bones underneath your butt, so oh. you're not rolled all the way back. Just by doing that, you're gonna engage the muscles in your upper back. Then we're going to interlock the fingers in front of us with our elbows straight. And then you just, just by keeping the elbows straight and raising the arms up like this, it triggers all the muscles up and down the spine, also lengthens through here. And then we'll come back down. For some people, actually even looking up can be beneficial because, again, we have a tendency to look down at our work or, or our food or whatever we're doing all day. And so we can do that. Another movement we can do is still sitting, same position on the, with the pelvis, is we're going to put our hands on the chair. Yes. And instead of our hands being turned in like this all day, we're going to open them up. And then we're going to push through our chest, push our shoulder blades down and back, and look up towards the ceiling again. So that makes our shoulder blades go from here to here, triggers the muscles up and down the spine. And are these strengthening as well? You, you're actually balancing because you're working the combinations of muscles versus just stretching. Okay, so every time you hear somebody talking about all their pain and they go to the chiropractor and they get adjusted every week and that sort of thing, uh, it, it's helpful to them, but if they just would do some exercise to strengthen their muscles, maybe that would be the, the key? Absolutely. It, it's, it has to do with the fact that the body learns by doing. So as long as somebody else is doing something to you, there's limitations on how much better you're going to get. And so, and it's, it's also how the muscles play together. They have to play nicely. It's not just strengthening. They've also got to be coordinated in the way they do things. Ooh, so there's a lot to know on this subject, and obviously we don't have time to cover everything. But uh, if you'd like more information, you obviously can go to fox6.com. We'll try to give you as much information as possible. But Anthony also has a book coming out in October called The Pain-Free Program, yes. and you actually had take people through step by step what they need to do then. Yes, and they can actually see what bodies they look like and, and classify themselves according to those bodies. Very good. All right, Anthony Carey, thanks for coming in this morning. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. All right. So